73 Questions with Tony Stark, written by XS Tourism on AO3. Small figurines and statues were being filmed before the camera that focused on Mr. Stark, who was sitting on an expensive couch, looking as urethral as always. Oh, hi, Tony. I'm here to ask you 73 questions. Tony offered Joe his typical press smile and greeted him back, motioning him to sit on the chair opposite of him. Honestly, he had no idea on earth why he was doing this interview, but Pepper said something about increasing his ratings or whatever, so he agreed. Then, curiosity got the better of him, and he ended up watching videos of other celebrities and the interviewer Joe created. They were clearly scripted and honest to God a little uncomfortable for him to watch, but Peter seemed to love them, so he dealt with them. Like now, he knew all the questions and had prepared answers accordingly, but he hoped Peter was still in the lab so he couldn't interrupt them and throw them off. So... Are you currently inventing anything new? I'm always inventing. I'm Iron Man, came his reply. He didn't really want to do this because it meant sacrificing lab time with Peter, and the kid only came over during the weekends when his Aunt May was busier and allowed it. Do you like being Iron Man? And if you had a superpower, what would it be? Of course I like being Iron Man, and Iron Man is a superpower. In his opinion, he would rather be tinkering in the lab with Peter than sit in a common area answering some questions. Joe nodded behind the camera. What are three words you would use to describe yourself? Genius, billionaire, philanthropist. Alright, what do you normally do on your lazier days? What do you do when no one is around? Tony dropped his press smile for a split second, giving the camera a deadpan look just for kicks. Lose around? Duh. And usually I'll be in the lab, upgrading, tinkering, among other stuff. Okay, what can you see from your window? Tony mentally cringed from the next words he's forced to say. Why don't I show you? He gets up from his seat, and Joe right behind him, bringing him to the largest window the floor has. The camera filmed the scenery for a few seconds before redirected to him again. What's the best way for you to de-stress? The bored billionaire walks towards the kitchen. I usually go to the lab, or tinker, or fly one of my suits. Is that a hot dog sandwich? Tony doesn't look back up to the camera or to Joe. Of course. The back and forth questioning goes on for a while until they reach the kitchen, where Joe takes the time to film the setup and the genius starts the coffee machine, something that looks old and out of place. How old's your coffee machine, Tony? A few months old. My intern made it from scratch with the dumpster materials, even though I told him I can give him anything he wanted or needed for simple projects like those. Just as Joe was about to ask another question, a tired looking teenager with messy brown curls stumbled into the kitchen. He had goggles on and biohazard gloves and his white lab coat stained green and there was questionable stuff sticking to it. Oh, hi Mr. Stark, hi stranger, the teenager said before making a beeline to the fridge. He grabbed a few granola bars and a few soft drinks before closing the fridge and rummaged through the covers for some chips. Tony stopped the kid from exiting the kitchen, removing each item one by one until the counter was filled with junk food. The kid, looking distraught, pouted up with him, eyes widening to create his notorious puppy eyes. No, Pete. Get something healthy to eat. And no lab time until you eat and shower. Tony's voice was stern, unlike anything the public has ever heard before, so Joe was certainly confused. And who might this be? Joe asked. A little off script, but it'll have to do. Tony looked up at him, seemingly forgotten his presence before collecting himself once again. He's the intern I was talking about. Aw, Mr. Stark, you talk about me? Peter jokingly says as he smirks up at his mentor before keeping up something resembling a meal to eat. Tony rolled his eyes and grabbed a mug, preparing for his coffee. Joe decided to proceed as if Peter appearing was scripted in the first place. And how do you like your coffee, Tony? Dark is my soul. Tony's reply was fast, but Peter's reaction was quicker. He whipped around and gasped at his mentor. Start. If you want your coffee to be as dark as your soul, then you should be drinking milk. Peter laughed uncontrollably at his joke, and Joe soon followed, leaving Mr. Stark to glare at the both of them. He crossed his arms, frowning at the two, and the camera caught shaky footage of Mr. Stark in that position. But once the duo calmed down, the billionaire led Joe into the Avengers' living area. So, Tony, how is living with the Avengers after the disagreement over the Accords? The camera caught Mr. Stark subtly looking over to the kid with a soft smile. It's fine. We have something we all agree on, and that's what matters to us. Tony pushed the door open, revealing Black Widow and Hawkeye sparring together with knives that looked deadly enough to scare Joe. Peter pulled Tony aside, just as the stark knife flew past him, and the genius's hand flew open to grip Peter in a hug. Joe was also startled, as if the camera jerking was any indication of it. Whoa, are your training lessons usually this dangerous? 
Tony buried his face in Peter's head, inhaling the scent, uncaring of the camera filming them. He nearly got stabbed. So what if the camera was filming a soft side with the least of his worries? What if Peter had gotten stabbed? Not usually, Natasha replied, scratching the back of her neck as she glanced at Peter and Tony. We don't usually use weapons for training. Joe quickly got a grip of himself, focusing on the task at hand. Moving on, Tony. What is your favourite smell? The billionaire in question lifted his head from where it had previously buried in Peter's head and said, I don't have one. Since the camera was focused on Tony, Natasha's eyebrow wasn't captured, along with Clint's soft, yeah right. Peter broke away from the hug, laughing slightly as if he heard the commentary. Mr. Stark, it's okay. No one got injured. Tony gave him a soft smile, starkly different from the one the press got to see. Tony exited the dangerous training room with Joe and Peter right behind them. Favorite sound, Tony? Once again, the camera caught Mr. Stark glancing over at Peter. I, um, don't have one. If you could choose, would you rather a mountain hideaway or a beach house? Peter looked curiously over at his mentor, patiently waiting for his answer. Tony winked at Peter, shrugging as he answered, Doesn't matter, I have both. It really depends on my mood. Again, questioning and answering goes back and forth for a while until they end up in the kitchen once more, although this time the setup is slightly different. What are some of the childish things you still do as an adult? Tony opens his mouth, but before he can speak, Pepper comes into the frame, stealing a kiss. I'll answer that one, because he'll definitely deny having any. He still sticks his tongue out at me. Peter laughs, and Pepper smiles down at him. I came up because I heard a little someone interrupted their mentor's interview. Peter sticks his tongue out at her. Interrupt? Something important? Me? Why? I'd never. Pepper lets out a small, exasperated sigh before shaking her head fondly and ruffling the kid's hair. She leaves, both ensuring that her mentor and mentee didn't cause any trouble kissing Peter on the forehead and Tony on the cheek. And last question, what are you most excited about these days? Our blessings on Fridays, Tony answered, flinging an arm around Peter's shoulders. How could I not be excited with this little gem coming over? Laughter fills the room as the trio bid farewell to one another.